Hello and welcome back to the Gallagher Shots YouTube channel and podcast. We are back with another post-match reaction, this time as Newcastle leave the FA Cup at the hands of Manchester City. Um, it is myself, Chris, your host today, joined by Joe and Nickel. Both of these guys were at the game yesterday, um, but we'll get their, their thoughts on it throughout the next 20 or 30 minutes. Um, I'm going to come to you first, Nickel. Um, like we said there, you, you were at the game and we heard the news of, of what the start lineup was going to be around about half an hour before it was announced. And mm. the rumours started circulating that Eddie Howe was going with a back five with two wing backs, the wing backs being Jacob Murphy and Dan Byrne, with Lascelles coming in to accompany Botman and, and Fabian Shaw at the centre back as well. What were your thoughts on that? Because personally, I thought that was the right choice to do going in this game because we all know how dominant Manchester City can be in these games. Yeah, um, I think it's we kind of expected it and we did um, mention it on the, the preview that we, we definitely thought the cells would come in um, at least. Um, but I think switching to the back five was really the right thing to do. I think when you, when you go away to Man City, you've got to try and contain them as best you can with the, the quality of player that they've got. And and then utilise your strength and attack with with your pace in, in terms of Murphy, Gordon, Willock and Isaac. So I can see why Eddie did that and I, I do think it was the right move as well. Yeah. Yeah, Joe, um, Eddie House set the team up in, in what you can... It's, it's basically a 5-3-2 formation, isn't it? Your three midfielders in there being Willock, Bruno and Longstaff. Then Gordon accompanied Isaac up top. Um, were, were you shocked to see him with, with two up top? Yes. Uh, well, when I first saw the team sheet, I thought that it might have that free roll behind Isak drifting off onto the left because you had Murphy as a right wing back. And I thought, well, it's kind of an opportunity to do almost what Trippier does in the back four when he pushes forward in as a back four. But uh, obviously, well, this time it will be a back four with the four centre backs. But it wasn't it wasn't quite the case. Gordon did stay um, quite late up front and was trying to latch on with uh, some of the long balls that were being played along with Isak. So, yeah, it was it was difficult. Um, obviously, uncommon role, I would say, having him and Isak up, like, up top together through the middle. Uh, I can see why it was done, because like you say, like um, Nickel said, we were trying to contain City and then, yeah, play pretty much play the long ball and hope that one of them two can latch onto it or use Bruno to press the ball forward because he did manage to do that a few times. Mm. Uh, yeah, I can see why the game plan was that, but it just, it didn't quite work. Their centre backs were too good at bringing the ball down um, and just retain us. We just didn't seem to click in that regard. So uh, yeah, I, I just, it didn't quite work. Yeah. And, and Nickel, I think as the game panned out in the first 10, 15 minutes, um, Doku saw a lot of the ball. Um, on, on that left hand side, and Do Doggy was quite a nuisance throughout the game. Uh, drifted over to the right lane later on in the game, um, but we seemed to struggle containing that, that on the left hand side, where, where Doggy just constantly had the ball and was just cutting inside and, and, and popping balls in the box. There, um, it, it it seemed to be an issue throughout, didn't it? Despite having five defenders on the field, yeah. It, just just watching the highlights back there, it, it felt like we were sort of you know we were sitting towards you know the edge of our eighteen yard line, but. There were, there were still gaps in, in, in there for, for their sort of more technical players to to, to play in. And, and I think that as we get onto the goal, you know, although we had a lot of players in and around the ball, we weren't actually on where we needed to be to, to stop a shot or to um to block passing lanes. So yeah, I think it was it was a it was a difficult um a difficult balance of, of getting that defence and, and attack right. Yeah, so so I'll, I'll come back to you, Joe. Um, the, the commentary, Danny Murphy, was not happy with, with Joe Willock's positioning uh, when, when we conceded that first goal, um, saying that he should be giving Dan Byrne a lot more protection. Um, Dan Byrne tries to, to stick his foot out, and, and basically it's just an overstretch, really, from, from Dan Byrne, where he tries to put his leg in the way of the shot, which, which he does do well, but it's one of those awful deflections where it just loops over the, the goalkeeper and the goalkeeper can do nothing but look over his right shoulder and just see that ball nestle in, in the bottom corner of, of the net there. Um, we, we've looked at this before where, where we've looked at Dan Burns positioning it in certain areas of the field and we've always come back to he needs more protection and 
we were hoping with Joe Willock coming back into the team, you would be seeing a lot more of that. Are you in agreement with the commentary? Should Joe Willock be a lot better in that in those sort of points of the game? Uh, right. I'm tempted to say no, because at the end of the day, a deflection is a deflection in. It was a disgusting one. But when you look at the game as a whole, I thought that Dan Byrne and that Willock cover actually, for the most part, dealt with them quite well. Uh, Nick, we were saying in the ground that even if the ball got past Dan Byrne, there was always a centre-back there, whether it was uh, Botman or Cher, to, to clean up and to get it away. And they were quite successful in that, uh, at least in the first sort of 20, 30 minutes. We dealt with quite a few of those dangerous balls. I mean, the, the way that Man City were playing as well, they were overloading, like I like to cover Kovacic and Rodri on sort of the edge of the box as well. So had drifted in to cover the likes of Bernardo Silva on that, uh, left hand side he would have just left space open for those players to run in and to exploit that space down the middle it, yeah you've just got to call it it was unlucky it was it was really unlucky um and again we'll same with the second goal it's it was relentless pressing and it was two really crap goals to concede but no I can't really blame I can't blame Dan Burn either really because they did what they had to do yeah, no, no, I agree with you. I don't think you can look at blaming anybody for that. It's one of those unlucky goals. And like you mentioned, and we'll, we'll come back to you, Nick, that. The second mm-hmm. one, very similar, uh, where Bernardo Silva has a shot. And it, it's a strange header for, for Botman to try and deal with. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's just, it takes a, the slightest of touches. Then Dubravka has mm-hmm. already gone at this point. Yeah. It, it's it's strange defending from, from Sven mm-hmm. Botman, um, a player yeah. who likes to score. A deflected goal. Uh, we've, we've seen that a few times in the last couple of seasons. And Pua Dubravka always seems to... Well, Dubravka got this time. I think Karius has had the last couple. Um, it, it's it's just strange from Botman, isn't it? Defensive-wise, it's... Mm. I, th- I think maybe he thinks he can get a full head on it, you know, to clear it. Um, but obviously, he, he, it's it's coming a bit of a, a bit pace and he can't, he can't get his full sort of clean connection on it. And then that's just sort of thrown Dubravka and... I've seen a couple of comments levelling a bit of blame at Dubravka, but I, I, I can't agree with that because I just think that, you know, it, that that's happened in a split second and he's already gone anticipating where the ball is meant to be going and then he's just nicked it and it's it's gone. So it's gone between his legs, I think, like under, in, um, and underneath him. So I, I think it's just unlucky. But I, I, I definitely... Um, I do think for for both shots we could have been a bit closer right, on the on the closeout. I do think that I think people will automatically go to, to you know to Dan Byrne and say, "Oh, you should have been um, a bit closer." But he was also looking at Kyle Walker on the overlap, so I think that's where Joe Willock had to yeah. be a bit closer. I think I think Joe Willock had to do a bit better, to be honest. Definitely on the first goal. Yeah, no, no, yeah. It's, like I said, it was very similar to, to what the comedy team was, was saying on BBC. Um, <clears throat> one of the things which I do want to mention, George, nothing to do with goals or conceding goals. It, it is the referee uh, and performance <laughs> throughout that game. Um, before Manchester City scored their, their second, um, Fabian Shaw put in an absolutely unbelievable challenge on Holland. Absolutely cleans them out, but wins the ball comfortably by Class doing so. Um, the referee... <laughs> Well, the referee doesn't doesn't he doesn't seem phased by it. it doesn't look like he's going to give a, a free kick or anything like that. And the play continues. As soon as the the, play, the ball goes out of play and then the play is stopped, the referee calls over Fabian Shaw and gives him a yellow card for that challenge. Fabian is not happy. Were you happy in that ground? <laughs> no, <laughs> I think we spent off the of the game slagging the ref off like and the linesmen. To be honest, there were at least a couple of occasions where I remember one time uh, Willick on the left hand side thought I, he he took the ball in. I think it just went out of play, but it did go out of play. Um, but then a few minutes later on the other side, I think um, I can't remember which city player it was, but it's exactly the same thing happened. It was clear as day it went out and it just didn't give anything. We were like, what's going on? Uh, yeah, no, the ref was playing into their hands so much. I mean, Man City did really well in breaking any kind of momentum. As soon as we got in our way, they were more than happy to just take tumble. Not saying they dive, but, you know, they did give the referee something to th- yeah. think about. And he thought it was really soft. Um, I thought we put in plenty of good challenges. Uh, 
And yeah, it just it's one of those. Like it, if it all depends on how the player goes down a lot of the time. Um, but it didn't help. It didn't help the fact that we then had two centre backs on yellow cards. Um, Early on in the game, yeah, because Lascelles picked one. Yeah, Lascelles and yeah. Cher got one, and then and then you look them two are on a yellow card. Um, you know, Bruno's obviously got to be careful as well, and it just it meant that we didn't quite have that bite and that snap that we needed. Because um, mm. I think when Lascelles took that uh, took the yellow card, I might have said to you, Nick, like, what's he doing now? We're like twenty minutes into the game. So I think he took down Doku, didn't he? And yeah, I can understand break up the play and that, but then you sat there going, "Well, geez, like that's going to happen the next for the next seventy minutes. Like they're just going to run at us." And at that point, now we're we're going to have to be very careful. So it was it made things really hard, difficult for us, and it added an extra layer to why I thought Eddie Howe should have made some changes at half time. Inevitably, he mm. didn't. But yeah, so, so stick them stick them with you. I stick them with you there, Joe. It, it's because we did have a chance before winning at it, uh, two 0 at the break there, um, because <clears throat> I think it's Murphy that puts the ball across and it's Dan Byrne that that knocks it back down for Isaac. Then Isaac has a shot at goal. It's a great save from the goalkeeper. It, it really is, and that was really our only chance at goal where you, you where you force the keeper to make a save. Throughout the game, Newcastle had a total of two shots at goal and one on target. That being the one which are on target when, when you look about Manchester City they had 19 shots at goal which you're expecting that of course you're expecting those shots coming towards you but it's me and me and Nicola was, was speaking about this before we started recording it's just a bit frustrating that once again we haven't really laid a, a glove on the opposition um, especially the, the a top team opposition and, and we get it we, we know how good Manchester City are but there just seemed like a little bit of a lack of fight in that game um, until obviously you get that chance. Then I think once Isaac got that chance, things slightly changed a little bit. We'll start coming to the game at that point, leading up to half time. Um, but like you said, going into half time, what, what were you wanting Eddie to how to do at that moment to change things? Well, the way I look at it, it's a one off cup game, you can't draw it. I mean, obviously, you can't, but then it'll go to penalties. So, like, it's got to be settled one way or another. You're 2-0 down. The game plan that you had clearly didn't work. I mean, I guess it opens the question, was the game plan working? Because, yeah, we conceded two, but there were two deflections. And you've got to look at it and go, right, okay, it was unlucky, but then are we containing them for the most part? And then are we able to actually threaten them? And besides that Isaac chance, we weren't threatening whatsoever. We were allowing them to recycle the ball. Um, and even when we got into their half, we just... It, we were latching on hopeful mm. long balls, as I said earlier. There was no like strings or triangles being put into play. And it was, you're looking at going, well, I'm not seeing where this attack and creativity is going to come from. And we, at this point, we need two goals. So yeah. you think, right, something needs to change. I, like we, I remember, again, we said a half time, Nickel, I'd rather get pumped 4 0 and actually have a go at trying to score and putting them under pressure. And to, and then they came out and it was exactly the same game plan again. Um, the midfield was completely overran. Bruno was the only one who was actually, well, Bruno was the only one who was able to carry the ball and bring it forward. He did it a couple oh. of times in the first half. He would take the ball from deep, drive forward, actually beat a player or two. And then that allowed the likes of Willick, Gordon, Isak to actually get into some space. And we were unlucky with a few overhead passes not to be in behind the defence. So the potential was there, but we just weren't, brave enough mm. to try that. I remember, I go back to the League Cup game against City, where we won at home. The first half, it was backs against the wall, relentless. Pretty much a similar story to what we saw yesterday. But then the second half, the pressing that we showed, and just the the balls to go toe-to-toe. I'm not saying you can go toe-to-toe for City for 90 minutes, but that second half in the League Cup, we were playing past the triangles around them. They were struggling to deal with us. And I'm like, well, why why can't we just try that again? I appreciate it's it's a way, it's a way, it's it's, it's the Etihad, but it's still it's still a grass pitch. It's still, you know, 11 v 11. Like, we can do that and we've shown we can do that. But we've gone back to this almost Bruce era of soak it up, hope we don't concede again in what? Maybe we had one, one, one shot on t- uh, target in the first half. If we replicate that same performance again in the second half, we'll lose 2-1 if we if we score it. That's going to be no mm. good. Um, Longstaff, again, was anonymous, but we know that he's been playing through an injury. 
Um, it's not been great. Anderson's coming back as well, but I think you need to change things up in that midfield because Bruno was the only one who was able to actually start playing, carry the ball and take on take on their players. So, no, I was disappointed to see that we didn't try something different immediately. Um, and it took until 60 minutes for us to actually get going and really cause them some threat. Uh, it, it did, yeah. Obviously, so- the, what was it, the three or four subs that we made? The lads come back out after half time, Nickel, and mm-hmm. it's again it, it backs against the wall, probably worse than what it was in the first half. It was just chance after chance for Manchester City up until that, that moment, which which Joe's mentioned, where the sixty second moment where Eddie Howe decides to make four changes. Uh, just to quickly go through the the changes: Danburn goes off for, for Lewis Hall, uh, Gordon is off for Almiron, Willick off for Anderson, and Longstaff is replaced by Miley. Mm-hmm. The change, the, the game changed slightly for around about 10 minutes where we looked like like there was a little bit of a fire in my belly at that point. Um, I, I thought Miggy done really well driving the drive off, up the field as well. Uh, mm-hmm. Lewis Hall looked absolutely sensational for a moment when he came on as well, which, mm-hmm. do, do you know what is? I, I've been quite critical of, of Lewis Hall because the times which I have seen him, I haven't thought he's been great, but I've always put that down to, to not having that extended run in, in the team um, and, and just coming on for a few minutes here and there with huge gaps in between that. Um, it's not like it's even a constant every game he'll come on and make that appearance. Uh, what were your thoughts on Lewis Hall? Because I, I know he has been getting a lot of praise across social mm. media in the last 24 hours. Yeah, I, I thought he did okay. I, I, I don't think he you know, was was unbelievable, but yeah, he, he did okay. and um, you know He kept, kept it tidy and, and got forward as well. And I think... Um, I think out of the subs, to be honest, I, th- I think that Anderson was probably the, the best out of out of the subs and made the most impact. He was getting his foot on the ball and, and Miley did well as well um, in midfield. So yeah, things did change a bit when they when they came on and we we did look a bit a bit better, but again, not without really laying it, you know, having having real big big opportunities. Mm. So when when you're saying those two mid midfielders coming on when you're talking about um, mm. Miley and, and, and Anderson. Mm-hmm. Does that not make even more shock that that Sean Longstaff is still getting his place in that starting eleven when we can all see clearly that something's not right with Longstaff? He's been off the pace for a little while now, and uh, we've shown how well Miley can do uh, against these big teams. And yes, we've all said Miley he's, he's probably had far too much game time than he should have had at this age um, mm-hmm. coming coming mm-hmm. in. Obviously, out, out of nothing really because of the injury crisis which we had. But going back, are you shocked that Longstaff continues to get those minutes under his belt from the the, the first whistle? Um, I wasn't shocked to see him yesterday, just because um, I, I thought that um, Eddie would go a bit, you know, a bit more defensive minded because you know Anderson and um, Miley are a bit more, um, a bit more forward thinking in that way. I would, I would say, rather than Sean Longstaff. Um, but I think another thing to consider is that obviously Miley has played a lot of minutes um, this season and he's, he's still very young. Um, and then Anderson is working his way back up to full fitness. So, um, But I, what I would say is that Anderson probably has an argument after this international break, after the, you know, the couple of weeks in the, in the warm weather training camp um, to get his, his fitness fully back um, to 100%. And then I think he could be in with a shout of, of coming in from the start uh, and possibly giving Longstaff a bit of a rest. Hmm. Do you think that's that's what he needs right now, Joe? Do you think Longstaff just so needs to rest and, and just recover from yeah. this this injury which he's fighting through by the, the, the sounds of things? Yeah, he really needs to rest, man. He's he did so well for us last season. And I think the thing with Longstaff is he thrives in this system where the pressing with Eddie ha- like with the Eddie House system of pressing and the relentlessness on the ball. That's what he's best at. He's not the most technically gifted player. We know this, but it was his running in the in the distances that he and the almost dog work that he did to like allow the likes of Joe Linton and Bruno to go high up the pitch. Like it, that's where he thrived, and we're missing those personnel. And for one reason or another, we can't play the same system that that we were used to seeing last season. And I think. It is exposing Longstaff's limitations, especially when you've got players like Bruno, like Willick on the ball, who you watch them and you are comfortable that they're going to do, if they're in danger, they'll be able to do something to get out of it, whether that's a little half turn, whether that's a like a skillful pass, or whether it's just that dribbling and being able to control, like a controlled dribble. I just don't think Longstaff has that same kind of. 
level that they do. And because of that, it's not it's, it's not quite clicking for him. And I don't think it's doing his confidence any favours. He's been getting a lot of criticism recently, and like rightly so. But we look we, we, when we talk about Lewis Miley, we talk about the fact that he's 17, that there's a duty of care to protect him, that he shouldn't be playing as many minutes as possible. Uh, but that same duty of care has to be extended to, to, to Sean Longstaff. And to say, if you're playing through an injury, if you're not playing, if you're not quite up to the same level as we need you to be, we have the options now. We've got Anderson. Miley can play. Just take him out the the, the, the team for a little bit. That and not saying don't play him at all. Maybe come on as a sub to help out, you know. But I just I think he needs a rest because it's not working for him. And at this point, I would actually say that him being in the in the team is almost a detriment to that starting eleven. And when it gets to that point, which, you know, you, you really need to take a hard look at, um, at, at what's going on. Yeah, it's 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 at the point now, Nickel, where mm-hmm. we saw with Dan Byrne um, a, a few weeks back, where it, it kind of is that low hanging fruit moment for for fans, where they can just just look at that one player, and, and I think Longstaff is probably the easiest target right now to look at because performances have been pretty poor for from him recently, um, and, and he seems to be the spotlight seemed to have moved from Dan Byrne across to Longstaff, which I, I thought were also coming to a certain mm-hmm. degree. Um, yeah. are, are you in agreement with with Joe? Um, I think I think he needs to to come out maybe for a little bit, but let's not forget that it was only a few months ago we were saying we really need Sean Longstaff back in this team. Um, so it's no by no means writing him off and saying you know he should never play again. It, it's more a case of give him a little rest, and he can still be a massive part of the season moving forward. Um, mm. You know we've got a lot, we've got very important games coming up in the league, and, and we are going to obviously need him. So. Um, Maybe you know take him out the firing line for for a little bit, but um, and and see how he does when he comes back in. But um, definitely, you know, he's been he's played a big part in the last you know in our success over the last couple of seasons. And and, mm. and when he and when he was out, um, people were calling for him to to come back as, as soon as as soon as he could, which he obviously has, and he's he's clearly playing through um, an injury or pain. Um, at the minute, um, which is obviously great dedication, but maybe it is perhaps also working um, against us in some ways. Yeah, so there's, there's been a lot of noise. Uh, just to, to summarise, obviously, and, and wrap this one up, Joe. There's been a lot of noise, and and I'm seeing a lot. Um, I've seen it a fair bit, and this is something which you had a bit of a rant about last night. Um, a lot of people going with the headline, the, the headline: um, Newcastle United season is over. Um, obviously, oh, yeah. with with us being out of the Champions League. Not being in the League Cup, out the FA Cup now, um, and obviously fighting for a, a European spot now. Mm-hmm. Is our season over? Bloody hell, no, it's not over. Like, right, okay. So, why do I even start with this? We've got Europa League to play for, or Europa Conference League. Sixth and seventh are still very much attainable. And when you look at the fixtures that we've got left, Man United away and Spurs at home are the two that really stand out as being very challenging and fair enough. But you know, a lot of the fixtures that are left are very winnable. And, you know, I was I appreciate when people might turn around and counter-argue that and say, well, Luton was uh, a winnable fixture. Forest was a winnable fixture. We didn't get that in. Yeah, totally fair enough. Understand that point. But we've seen what this team can do. And I think one of the most pivotal things is the return of Joe Willock. And let's not forget, he's kind of come back into a bit of a, like, a, a, bit of a, like a storm of chaos here where he's had... Blackburn away, which a champ, you know, the championship side, they're quite, they're going to batten down the hatches. They, they were quite difficult. It's diff- different when you play against a Premier League side like Wolves, where he played really well against Wolves. Wolves were able to, over, you know, overcommit. We played on the counter attack and we exposed the weaknesses that that they had. A lot of the teams that we're going to come up against, they're going to exploit more space than the likes of a Chelsea away or a Man City away. We're not be playing Man City every week. I think there's a mass. I think there's a massive opportunity here to go on a run of games and pick up some momentum that we've struggled to have because of injuries and because of fixture congestion. And I know that stuff was more prominent back in December, and we're not. We don't have the fatigue excuse anymore. But I just think there's so much more to play for, and I know what this team can do. And I just it might be a bit of blind faith on my part, you know. But at the end of the day, as a fan, that's what you got to have, right? You just got to hope that we can pull this together and, and and the personnel who's on the pitch can step up. 
you know, we're, we're hopefully having put, pulled back before the end of the season. I, I don't know, it might be April now. I don't know. But, you know, Harvey Barnes should be back by the end of the month. Um, and we've just got to, we've just got to back the lads and see, see us getting that Europa spot. We've made it to the quarterfinals of both cups and we were so close to getting to the knockout stage of the Champions League. That, when you combine it with all of the mitigated circumstances that we've had this season, yeah, it's, I think, we can't expect much more than that. I think just to interrupt you, Joe, as well, though, just, yes, we we made it the, the quarterfinals of both cups, but I think we'll have to look at the, the teams that we've been drawn against as well there. Um, and that's The league well. cup was absolutely honking that the teams we had. So it started with, with Manchester City, wasn't it? So it was Manchester yep. City, then Man United, then Man United. We went out to the hands of Chelsea, um, mm. if I remember right. And then obviously this yep. one, if you're looking at the FA Cup, we've played four away fixtures away so mm-hmm. if you look at the first one and i know we made that look easy just uh, I'll, I'll make that well known so the the derby against sunland wait that was a stroll in the park for us but it's a difficult game to go into especially away game uh, at the stadium of light it's followed by the away trip to fulham another one against blackburn then obviously we'll, we'll go out to the hands of, of manchester city nickel it's mm-hmm. been a tough old run in those two cups and that's not even thinking and looking at the champions league draw yeah, yeah. I, 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 to be honest, I totally agree with everything Joe said, really, because we had this discussion yesterday in person. But um, uh, I, yeah, I think. Look, we've just had a bit of a, a rough and an unlucky season, and you know, t- to be honest, I think we're we're doing all right under the circumstances. As Joe said, I don't really think we can, you know, demand much more. I, I don't think at, at this point of of where we are in in the transition period. Um, do, do you think? Do you think a lot of it's just because of of how well, we did last season. I know people keep on mentioning this, but yes, mm-hmm. we had a fantastic season last year. Probably overperformed to a certain um, extent. There's been a big drop off, and yes, I know a lot of that is down to to the injuries which we've sustained mm-hmm. across the field. That there's been so many, um, a lot of your big players being injured as well. And we just look at the team now with Pope and, and Joe Linton being injured is it, a huge miss. Mm-hmm. Having said that, though, when Eddie Howe has had players at his disposal. Uh, and being able to to field a strong start in 11 with, with a couple of players available from the bench as well, performances haven't really picked up that much. No, they, they, they just haven't been at the, the level of last season. And as, and as you said, that you know, we definitely, you know, we did overachieve last last season. Everyone was playing out of their skins, and it was a, uh, it was you know one of the the best scenes we've had in recent times. So I think when you when you do have that drop off. You know, people are naturally going to to feel you know frustrated and, and and sort of wondering why that's happening and trying to search for a reason. Um, as we've said, you know, countless times, there is multiple reasons and and factors to, that go into it. So it's hard to pinpoint something. But uh, but yeah, just as Joe said, just got to back them now to the end of the end to the end of the season and and hope we get Europa League or Europa Conference League. And to be honest, I would be happy with with either. I so, so think. What was it? So, Joe, I'm going to come to you anyway. Do you, yeah. do you think so? So, what, what's a successful end to the season now? It's got to be, it's got to be, um, some kind of European finishing spot, whether it's conference or not. The main reason I say that is because the likes of Bruno, Isak, I mean, Tenali doesn't quite have the same like stand on as he maybe did when he first joined, but these players have come for a project and they, we saw we saw against um, we saw against City which players were really standing out as the world class ones. I mean, under the circumstances, like you could see which ones were just a little bit cut cut above the rest, and they're here for a successful project. But also, they're here for their own individual careers, and a lot of them are young. They're 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 going to be hungry for more European football. They're not going to want to languish in ninth, tenth spot. They're too good for that. And I genuinely and I genuinely think this team with a good summer window will be far better than that and will be more prepared for a European uh, campaign of some mm. sort, obviously not Champions League. But mm. I think we have to focus on trying to get seventh. And it's not just that as well. It's the momentum that it brings on to next season. Because if we kind of stutter our way over the finish line, it I'm not saying it's gonna have a massive impact on 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 uh, you know next season, but I just think it it would go a long way for us to get a run of five or six wins or what have you, get that confidence back that we've kind of not had over mm. this season. I mean, let's not forget, you know, last but last season, 
we were a team of momentum. We started off a little bit, you know, we struggled a little bit at the very start. Then we had a great run October, November, over Christmas, January, sort of stood a little bit. And then come sort of March time after the Carabao Cup final, we basically blasted away teams and that, you know, and we got that. We were a team of like momentum and mm. we need to get that back because we've not really had it too much. Um, I would like to quickly go back to what we were saying about sort of tactics wise and like, you know, our, how we're performing in, in the fact that it's not really changed too much. Um, I think with Eddie Howe, the problem is, is that he has built a system that has worked and has worked with a number of players that, like I've said before, may be limited in, in certain qualities, but it's worked because of the work rate and the pressing and et cetera. And when we've not had particular personnel like Joe Linton, like Nick Pope, like Isak for a certain number of um, games, like it Callum doesn't Wilson, work. everybody keeps forgetting about Callum, Callum Wilson. Callum well. Wilson, it doesn't work as well. And I will say that how does tend to maybe stick to it a little bit too much. Mm. And you have to then quite, ask, well, quite stubborn at times, Joe. Yes. And the, but the question, the overall question with this is, can he get more out of the crop of players that he's got with a different system? And I don't know if I, I would say maybe not. So it's difficult because I can, yeah, we can criticize how and say that he's, he's too stubborn with his team selection, maybe constantly, consistently pick and burn um, and long staff. And you know that he's not quite changing. I mean, he did, obviously he did just change against Man City, but that didn't quite work. Um, and we've already spoken about whether he could have done something different. But, you know, I think you've got to think, can he get more out of this crop of players that he currently has? I don't know if he can. I think we need a good summer window. I think we need Tenali back in Joe Litton back. And I'm quite hopeful for when August comes around that we'll be in a much stronger position. Fingers crossed, yeah. I think just his performance, yes. I think you would be silly to, to expect a Newcastle United win there. Um, I know on our day, yes, we, we can beat anybody that, that's in front of us. We can. Um, but this is Manchester City at the end of the day. They are light years ahead of not just ourselves, but many football teams a- across the world. And once again, it just showed that the gulf in quality between the two sides. We, we, we've seen it before. We'll see it again. Um, th- there's hopefully a lot more improvement to come from, from this side and football club uh, in the near future. It's just... Once again, no matter how many say it, times I say it though, uh, and defend the, the reasons why there's a difference in, in, in class and in quality, you're just expecting that little bit more on the day. And I think that's what a, a lot of fans are frustrated about, that two shots at goal, one shot on target. It's not a great performance, no matter who you're up against. Yeah, it really isn't. And, and like you said, Joe, as soon as you, you go a goal down, two goals down, that game plans out the window, five out the back. It's mm. completely gone. You, you need to, mm. to go on the, the front foot. You need you need yeah. to change things. You know, you need to go on the front foot. You need to create chances, which, yes, we did create a couple of chances throughout that game. He's like, at times, couldn't even move the ball from underneath his feet. Um, mm. th- there was a chance where, where Dan Burns should have hit it, and he just fumbled over and, and tried to play it back to, to Isaac, which, which was horrendous. It's just, in those moments against teams like Manchester City, you have to be top of your game. Any sort of defenses errors or anything like that, they'll capitalise it. And when you do get that one shot at goal, you need to put that ball in the back of the net. I think the thing that really, like, really annoyed me yesterday was that when we made the subs and we got the likes of Lewis Hall on, um, we actually looked really dangerous at times, mm. and we were actually getting those passing lanes going and pressing up the pitch. And yeah, I'm not saying we would have necessarily won if Lewis Hall had started and we were playing like four at the back or whatever but just we'll give it a go we'll give it more of a go but why did it take until 60 mm. minutes when we're 2-0 uh-huh. down at the end he had to go oh you know what we might want to do attack and actually you know press them we're 2-0 down what you got to lose like uh it, it, it was re- like I, i'm not comparing the two really but it was slightly reminiscent of the Bruce days where we got that quarterfinal against City and we were happy to lose 2 2 0 and be like, oh, well, you know, we kept the score down. That's not good. We're expecting it to be worse. I know. I know. Yeah, we've seen a lot of that on social media the, the last couple, well, the last day, really, you know, people saying, well, as, I was expecting the scoreline to be a lot higher than that. That's that's not what we're here for. We're not here to see how many goals we'll, 
we can keep out the back of the net. That, that's not what we get to do. We'll it's not about yeah. It, yeah, it's not about sort of losing gracefully. It's about giving it a go. Um, it's, it's getting to Wembley. That's what it was all about yesterday, mate. It was yeah, good. yeah. Yesterday I know. It was all and about maybe, getting to Wembley, and we had one shot on target. Maybe I'm oversimplifying it. Maybe you know, maybe Eddie Howe's game plan in his head, it it was going to be more effective than what it was. I just didn't see what what could possibly come out of what what how we were set up. And it, the proof was in the pudding where we had one shot on target in the first half. And like I say, it took until a few positive subs in the it, it, at 60 minutes to actually make a difference. Mm. And that was just like, well, okay, great. It's too late now. Mm. Yeah, no, I get it. Um, anything that you want to add, Nickel, before we go? Uh, next year, right, lads? <laughs> next year, next, next year, year lads. We'll, we'll do next this year. dance all again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try and try and get Europe this season, and then we obviously know that the summer is a massive summer for the you know a bit of an overhaul, um, mm. and you know get you know move some players on, get some get some new players in. But obviously, getting Europe is going to will be a factor in who we can attract in the summer. So yeah, yeah. the remaining remaining league games just um, try and finish in, in Europe in some sort of capacity. And see what happens in the summer, and go again next year, and maybe we'll get to Wembley next year. <laughs> it's like, it's like, like you said, Nicol, I think it's not just the fact of, of players that you can attract; it's also mm. players that you can keep as well. Yeah, which, yeah which definitely. Could be the worrying thing come the summer. Um, yeah. Thanks everybody who has been watching this one. Um, if you are listening to the audio as well, thanks very much. Just give us a five star review; it means a lot to us. If you are watching on YouTube, just like the video, become a subscriber. It costs you nothing to do that. And um, I will be back tomorrow night, Monday night, with the Over Smiling Faces podcast, boys. And we will be going through this game once again in a little bit more detail. And I've got a feeling that there'll probably be some disagreements tomorrow night between the, the, myself and the three lads, as always. Um, <laughs> but we'll see you there at 10 past 8 on YouTube. Um, thanks, boys. It's been a pleasure, as always. Shame the result, as always recently, isn't the best. <laughs> thanks, boys. See you later. <laughs>